This is the 2022 Ford Transit Connect passenger wagon. And a few things that are special about this one, it's the XLT trim level, and it's also got a few other things. So it's got that front rear sensing system and a few other options. Steve here, Cars with Steve. And before we get started, I wanna give Yorkdale Ford a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. Now this is gonna be a quick walk around going over some of the basics. If you're looking for a little bit more of an in-depth look, specifically on how that media screen works, check down into the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video there as well. Well, let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun and see what's going on with the 22 Transit Connect. Starting off with some exterior styling of the vehicle. So first and foremost, it's got a nice streamlined body look to it. Body molding colors along the bottom there. Now for the tire size, we are looking at 16 inch tires and that's gonna be regardless of which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at because the Transit Connect does have three available trims. It's the XL, the XLT, or the Titanium. Again, it's gonna give you different features depending on which model you look at, but we've got 16 inch tires with different style rims, again, depending on the trim level of the vehicle you've got. We've got these beautiful headlamps and then our fog lamps along the bottom there, you might get them, might not. Now, when we get into the XLT and the titanium trim level, they will be standard, unavailable as an option in the XL base trim level. Now, on top of that, this specific one does have the forward sensing system as well. So it gives us that forward sensing and that rear sensing system. And we've got a few different packages there because you could look at the option just with the reverse sensing system, or you can do the one with both the reverse and the forward. I recommend, honestly, at least minimum getting that reverse sensing system, but it's gonna depend on what you're doing with the vehicle. All right, now taking a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle. So the Transit Connect does have two available engine choices, depending on whether you're a fleet customer or not, or if you're in Canada or the US, because it's got a two liter or a 2.5 liter engine. In Canada, in order to get that 2.5, you've gotta be a fleet customer. But in the States, you can get it either way. But taking a look from a power perspective, the two, point, the two liter that we're looking at here is going to be able to push out 150 horsepower and 144 pound-feet of torque, while the optional 2.5 liter is going to be able to push out 169 horsepower and 171 pound-feet of torque. So a nice amount of power, but at the end of the day, this thing is small and it's nimble as well. So very popular in the European market, specifically for its smallness and how nimble this thing is. Now, as we actually look underneath the hood, we've got easy access if we need to top up some fluids, we can easily check our oil, and then we've also got easy access to the battery. In order to be able to fill up fuel inside of the vehicle, it's a very straightforward process. So just along our driver's side, we've got a capless system there. So just insert your fuel hose, fill up, and you're good to go. When it comes down to the fuel quality, minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 gas, 87 octane. So we don't have to use a premium fuel inside of this thing. But one of the cool things is that the Transit Connect is also flex fuel capable, which means we can use an E85 gas as well. So if your local gas station has the E85, knowing that we can use it inside of this thing safely as we start to move to the back of the vehicle. So a few things to point out. First and foremost, we do have wipers along the back, which is always a nice touch. We've got our transit badge along the side and then our XLT badge there as well. And the vehicle is flex fuel capable. Looking at some standard technology, we will also have our backup camera across every trim level. Now, the reverse sensing system that we're looking at there is optional, but one of the big reasons why I recommend that reverse sensing system is just for an added layer of safety, because we can get the reverse and the forward sensing system as a package, but I do recommend at least the reverse sensing system, available optionally in most trim levels of the vehicle, standard on the titanium. But one of the big benefits of that reverse sensing system, just, like I said, just an added layer of safety. All right, now taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So we've got our Ford logo along the back, along the front of the fob, we've got our lock button, our unlock button, our side door unlock, as well as our panic alarm. Now on top of that, we do have our regular flip style key as well. So that's nice to know we've got that flexibility. Now, one thing to note, we don't have a remote start directly on the key fob, but by using the Ford Pass Connect app on our cell phone, we've got the option of remote starting either on an Android or an iPhone device, which is nice. Now, in order to be able to get inside the vehicle, literally all we're gonna do is just unlock, double unlock in order to get those back doors open. And as you can see there, open there and open along the side. Now, looking at the transit, we've got a couple different options for the actual cargo doors. We've either got exactly that, these dual cargo doors, or we've got an optional lift gate as well, depending on what you're doing. Honestly, if you're ever gonna be using this thing to transport cargo, definitely recommend looking at the dual doors instead. Now, as you can see there, we've got a few different rows for the vehicle as well. We've got a couple different cargo dimensions and measurements that are gonna be showing up because one thing to think about, we've got measurements coming from the bottom to the top there, and then we've got a few different options as well. So looking at just that cargo area, we do have a little bit of space, not a ton of it, but it is nice to know that we've got that flexibility. All right, now look at the difference in the cargo dimensions when we've got that third row folded down. Now we do have a few different ways we can fold those seats down, but we'll get to that one in just a second. We do have a few different ways that we can fold these seats down as well, and that's gonna give us varying dimensions for what we can actually store inside of this thing. 
But one thing that is nice is that we do have that 50-50 split, so as you can see there, so we can fold down one side or the other if we need to load some cargo up, while we still have some passengers sitting inside the vehicle. Right now, one of the nice things about getting these cargo doors is what we can actually do to open these things up. So we've got a button along the side there, so we can see a yellow button on both doors. We can literally push that button and extend the doors out, so we've got a 90 degree opening instead. So definitely useful if you're going to be storing some things. Now we've got a couple different anchors along the back there as well, so if we need to tie them some things down, so kid seats, things like that. We've got a little tab here in the back as well, and that's going to be the release for the spare tire that's located just underneath the vehicle. Now over and above that, other things to point out, we've got some lights in the back, and then we've got a 12 volt power point just along the back in the very top as well. All right now, there are a few different ways that we can fold down the seats of the Transit, because we could literally just take this red tab along the bottom, we could pull it, and we could literally just fold the seat down like that. Now one of the good things is that it's nice, it's quick, and it's easy. We can take these tabs along the top, we can pull this up, and we can fold down to extend. That's nice because it is, like I said, very simple in order to be able to fold it down, but we don't have a lot of dimension space when we fold it down this way. Now that's one of the nice things is because we do have another option in order to be able to fold this thing down. Inside of the actual seat itself, there's actually a little tab. We would literally pull that tab in order to fold the seat down flatter. We take that red tab again, we pull down. Look at that, it's like a stow and go seat. We crank this up and over. And look at the difference in the dimensions there. So we literally have like almost, what, six inches of difference in there when we fold that seat down so that it's a flat fold instead. All right now, similar to the third row, the second row has two different ways that we can fold these seats down. So very straightforward, just along the side there, and that's gonna be the same for that second row driver passenger side. We've got a little tab. We're literally just gonna pull that down and the seat folds down flat. So it's really that simple. Now, that's way number one, and that's cool because we can slide some boxes in there if we wanted to, nice and easily. Other option is to take this tab that's right along the very back there, so closest to that third row. We're literally just gonna pull this up, and we're gonna slide forward, click it down, and look at that. So as you can see there, we've got a flatter fold, which is really going to take advantage of that third row seat when we have that flatter fold there as well. Now, one thing to note, if you go to pull this thing up, this is actually locked into place when it's down on this lower level. So in order to be able to get the seat back up again, we literally have to take that same tab, we lift up, we have to keep on holding it to lock it into place. We take that other tab, pull up, and the seat's back up again. And it really is that simple. Now, I am actually shocked at how much space is inside of this thing. Like, I'm six feet tall, and like up overhead, I've got like four inches of head space. So if you've got some taller people, they could technically fit in the back seat here, which is nice to know. And one nice thing is that I do have a ton of knee space, a good amount of foot space as well. And one of the cool things is that this third row, we can actually move it forwards or backwards a little bit. So if we need to create a little bit more space for some cargo, we could do that. Then we can slide it backwards and forwards very easily. Now looking at third row features, there aren't really many. So looking off to the side, we've got a little cup holder there. We've got a little storage pocket along both sides. And then we've also got a basic for our fan control, which is nice to know that we do have the flexibility to be able to control the fan from that third row as well. And then up overhead, we've got a little cabin light that we can turn on or off. Now looking at second row spacing. So driver and passenger seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. I still have a nice amount of knee room, good amount of foot space as well. And up overhead, like this is kind of ridiculous. Like I've got maybe six or seven inches of head space. So if you've got some tall people, they're definitely fitting inside of this thing, no problem. Now, one thing to note, this middle row, this seat is not movable whatsoever. So we can't slide the seats forwards, backwards. We do have the option for a slight recline as well though, which is nice. So if we want a little bit more of a comfortable drive, we could absolutely do that. So it is good to know. But looking at second row features along the driver and the passenger side in that second row, we do have window control buttons. So we can go up and down with it. Along both driver passenger seats, we've got some pockets in the back there. Now moving down, we've got a little bit of technology in this thing as well. So we've got a 12 volt power point, we've got a 150 watt power point, so our traditional wall outlet, and then we've also got basics for climate control, so we can control the actual temperature in the back, and then we've got some basics for the fan speed as well. All right, so taking a peek along our driver's side door. So firstly, we do have our side view mirror there, and this thing does have our blind spot system as well as a mini mirror there as well. Looking on the side, as you can see, we do just have our basic there, so we don't have the intelligent access inside of this vehicle. Moving along in the inside there, so as you can see, we do have our unlock and our lock buttons. We can figure out what's going on with our windows, and then we can also control our side view mirrors. Down a tiny little bit more, we do have a little bit of storage space, and that's going to be on the driver and the passenger side. 
As we start to hop inside, so as you can see there, we do have our running lamp selector, so we can figure out what's going on with our running lamps, so we can easily adjust that one. I do recommend just keeping it under the auto setting along the top there. And then we can also increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen, and then we can turn our fog lamps on or off. All right now, adjusting the driver's seat inside of the Transit Connect might be manual, might be powered, depending on which terminal of the vehicle you're looking at. But in order to adjust, very straightforward along our left-hand side, if it's power, we're just going to go forwards, backwards. We can use that to also go up and down. We've got one for our backrest, so we can go backwards and forwards with it. And then we've also got a button along the side, so it's actually a little lever there along the side, and that's going to be for our lumbar support. So we can give ourselves a little bit of extra stability for our lower back if we want it. Now on top of that, with the steering wheel, manual process across the entire vehicle lineup. So literally just in the middle of the steering wheel column between our knees, we do have a little lever there. We're gonna crank that down, telescopic wheel, in and out, up and down, find your perfect position, click it in order to lock it back into place. Right now, hopping inside of the vehicle. So, a few things to point out. Firstly, this is just going to be a quick video looking at the basics of the steering wheel as well as that media screen. If you're looking for a more in-depth breakdown of how all of this stuff works, check down into the description below because I've put together a video on that. But looking at some of the basics, the left pad is going to let us figure out what's going on with that cluster screen. So we can go up and down. We've got a few flexibilities there. So we've got some driver assistance settings, navigation settings, audio sources, things like that. We do have basic cruise control for this thing as well. Along the right-hand side, we can increase or decrease the volume, change between songs or radio stations, answer or hang up on a phone call. We also do have a voice command prompt. Now, the command prompt is going to do different things depending on which version of the vehicle you've got. When we have the enhanced, which is part of the XLT and the titanium trim, we can change songs, we, are, we can change radio stations, we can make phone calls, and we potentially can navigate using our voice depending on whether or not our Sync 3 screen has that navigation capability. But looking, we also do have our turning stick, which we can flash our high beams easily, and then the right stick is going to control our front and our rear wipers as well. Now, looking at this Sync 3 media screen, this specific one has factory navigation, but if yours didn't, not a big deal, because we do have the option for factory nav, but if yours doesn't, we still do have the flexibility on this Sync 3 screen to connect to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which means that we can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze directly through this middle screen, and it is very straightforward to set those things up. Moving down a tiny little bit, we've got our volume rocker. We can turn our audio on or off. We've got some basics for audio control. And one of the cool things is that as nice as the screen is, if you find it a little bit too distracting, we can turn it to a calming screen instead, which means we've got the date and time, or we can just turn the whole screen off, button press again in order to bring it back to life. We do have our four-way blinkers and then a wireless charging pad. And this is one of the reasons why you want to look at the XLT trim level, because for a couple extra bucks, you do have a few different options. That me larger media screen is the big one, but the wireless charging pad also is an amazing option. So which means that we do have wireless charging capabilities if your phone supports it. Moving down, we've got some basics for our climate control. We do have dual zone climate control inside of this specific trim level as well, which is always a nice thing. We've got our eco mode as well, so we do have that eco coaching. We've got our traction control button, so we can turn that on or off. Auto start stop is the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the vehicle, and to the engine, I should say, if we're stopped for an extended period of time. And then we have also can turn off our parking sense system. So that beeping that we get as we back up, we can turn that one off. Now that reverse sensing system is available as an option, and I do recommend getting that as an option from the factory. You could install it aftermarket if you wanted to. Moving down, we've got our traditional shifter as well, which is a nice thing. We've got our park reverse neutral drive, and then our manual mode. Because if we look on the left-hand side of the shifter, we have a plus and minus button, which means we can change out gears if we want to. Moving down a tiny bit more, we've got a few USB ports, so a few USB there. We've, this specific one also has the smoker package, which means that we do have our traditional cigarette lighter adapter there, and we've also got our ashtray. So it is nice to know that we've got that option. If you're a smoker, you can order that from the factory or get it as an aftermarket accessory. Moving down, but we do have a few cup holders there. We've got our parking brake down a bit more we've got a little storage area and then we've got an armrest with a little bit of storage space as well not the inside of the actual storage area there so something to think about as we move up overhead we do have an auto dimming rear view mirror another reason to get the xlt trim level is because at night when things are a little bit bright behind us this thing is automatically going to dim up a little bit more we can control our cabin lights we also do have a sunglasses holder and then there is a little bit of a storage tray along the top there as well so we can store some things if we want to we've got our pillar assist handle there as well which is always a nice touch now we do have our visor there which this one has the vanity mirror but it doesn't have the light but we do have the option of taking this and we can extend it out quite a little bit if we need to block a little bit of sun and it is a teeny little bit flimsy there so something to think about you don't want to load this thing up too too much but that is going to be the basics of this vehicle Whew. All right, 
Now time for the fun part. Let's take this thing out for a spin and see how it handles. Now, a couple things. This is the two liter engine and it's a naturally aspirated, so a non-turbocharged engine. So I'm not really expecting killer performance out of this thing, but at the end of the day, you get a van like this just for basics to keep things a little bit more cost effective as well. And also for basic transporting. Now, that's one of the interesting things is like how big this thing is. Like I've got so much room up overhead, where it's like realistically, I'm never gonna need to use the amount of space that's inside of this thing. But if you need it as an option, it's definitely there for you. I like how nimble this thing is, like super nimble, super responsive. Pretty good. Now, a couple things to think about. How much weight are you potentially going to have in this thing at one time? Like, what payload are you looking at? Because you've got some flexibility when it comes down to it. So, I mean, whether you go for the option of the passenger or the regular cargo van is ultimately going to depend on you. Do you need more than two seats in your vehicle at any point in time? If so, you're going to want to look at the Transit Connect passenger wagon as, as an option instead. If you're using it strictly for commercial purposes, you can definitely just get away with a regular cargo van. And that's one of the cool things because if you're doing up Fitting. Like if you're going to be doing things like, ooh, I don't know, maybe adding in like a camper van style, like you want to add in a bed, things like that, you could absolutely do that inside of the cargo van. And one of the interesting things is that we could technically remove the seats, that second and third row seat. It's not an easy process, it's bolted down, but we've got the ability to do that if we wanted to. So let's say if you only needed that two seater, you wanted to open up that third row, you could do whatever you want, or you can just do that flat fold seat instead. So you've got some flexibility. Um, like I said, it is bolted down, so it's not an easy fix. It's not an easy fix. Like at the end of the day, it's not like you're gonna easily just be able to pop this thing out, easily remove these seats. It takes a little bit more planning in order to be able to do it, but it's not impossible at the same time. And one of the keys to really understanding the gear shifting inside of this thing is just to go slow as you actually go to speed up. So rather than flooring it, letting it kind of chug in between gears, nice gradual, nice slow increase. And it's again, just the nature of a vehicle like this with it being the type and the engine size that it is as well. Uh, one of the cool things is that we do have a manual mode, so we could shift down and we can manually control the gear that we're in if we want to. Okay, going to drop it down to a manual for a second just to see. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, improved performance. It's like looking at sport mode inside of other vehicles. It's like if you put it into sport mode, infinitely better performance. It's the same idea here when it's in the manual mode because you can control what gear you're in. Infinitely better performance because you can get the vehicle to rev up a little bit higher when you're in that manual mode. But one thing to note when you're in the manual mode, make sure you're paying attention as well because you have to make sure you're flipping out gears as you go. You don't want to redline it too much, potentially damage to the engine. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2022 Ford Transit Connect. What did you think? Nice, it's nimble, and it's got quite a little bit of cargo space if you need it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social network. Think about subscribing. And if you have any questions, any concerns, you're not really sure which way you should go, drop down in the comment section below. More than willing to talk you through any issues you might be having. And until I see you next time, guys, take care.